for anyone who does not know what a will is, mm -hmm. explain to us what a will is. And also, there's also another term, another thing that I hear. I don't know. It's called power of the attorney. Mm. And then there's those there's those uh, legal terms that people read. Uh, uh, you know, you know those legal terms. Administrator. Term, yes. Mm. I want you to just break it down for us so that we understand when we talk about a will, what it entails, and who can write a will and who cannot write a will. Okay. Well, a will is basically a declaration by a living person of his intentions on how he would like his estate or his properties to be managed upon the, their death. Mm -hmm. So basically it's a declaration in writing or it can also be oral uh, on what you want your property to... Oral meaning you can do an audio or I can uh, like a recording like a voice note then I send to my lawyer and I'm like this is my will. Yes, you can do an oral, mm -hmm. or you can even have. Uh, I'll, I'll go into those details on I'm how. I'm going to do one oral tonight will if I can do oral one. I'm okay. sending yes. our family group. The only, <laughs> the only, the only interesting thing is that when you do an oral will, uh -huh. you have to die within three months. Otherwise, uh -huh. it doesn't uh, hold after three, uh, three months. Are you serious? Even Unless the video one. Three even months. the video one, and then you have to have witnesses uh, around you who are actually. Are present at the time you're making that will okay so not just one person but at least two people okay who should be able to hear how you want your car your house your land to be distributed and so that's basically what a will is okay yeah and now when it comes to matters of the will uh we've had many cases let me give a case in point of uh many stories have been happening mm -hmm. but there is a case i want to put forward to you yeah someone is married and they have a husband this husband passes away and the man had written a will. Upon his death, then I hear there's a side chick called Karigo mm. with a child. Mm. Then she comes. Twins. Hey, okay, fine. She had to make it dramatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are twins <laughs> yes. in this particular picture. Mm. And these are cases that happen where you find a man had written a will, mm -hmm. but had not included the side chick mm. or the side piece or the other woman. And the children need to be recognized. If they're not recognized in the will, do, can they contest it? Like, th can this lady, Carigo, with her twins, contest that will for her children to be incorporated in it? Now, here is, here is what uh, makes it, sets it apart, okay. having a will and not having a will. Okay. And, uh, like, uh, Carigo has asked, uh, there are terms which we use, and when you have a will, we call it, you die tested. If you die without a will, you, you die intested. Intested or in estate? Intested. Okay, yes. So in this scenario whereby someone has died and they happen not to have, uh, they happen to, to have a will, a will, yes, but they left out uh, children yeah. from another family. Yes, and what you'll give happen? us both cases. Yeah, yes, I'll yeah. give you both, both cases. cases. One without a will, one with a kid. Yes. Will. So when that happens and you have already left these children uh, and you do not include them, include them in the will, what will happen in this scenario is that they can contest, but as we've said, a will is a declaration of yes. of someone who is alive yeah. on their wishes on how they would want their properties yes. to be distributed. And so the persons who are left out would actually have a very hard time to dispute. Mm. Because he did not contest. want them to have it or rather he did not include them. Yes. And the court will be respect respectful of the person who yes. made a will yeah. okay. because yes. this person had a reason why they left out this family or yes. the children. Yes. And so uh, the person and the children and the uh, probably, yeah, the sidekick uh, mm. chick will have a very hard time to actually challenge this will. I want to give a case in scenario. There was a member of parliament uh, who passed away exactly three years, three, two years, just before COVID. Mm. And when he passed away, there was an MCA who had a child of his. And at the church, we all saw it on TV. Mm. This woman decided to come and claim how she was and she has a child. And I saw they went to court and the court actually decided to award this particular child. Mm. This, but why, 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 why did that happen? Yet in this man, this member of parliament, yeah. did not leave anything for this, uh, this uh, Carigo. Yeah. Say, sorry, I'm using your no, name. No, it's darling. fine. Yes, did not leave f uh, anything for Carigo or the child. Mm. But I saw everyone coming up in arms. All children were, uh, uh, children are, uh, uh, what's the word? Children are, li uh, they're innocent. Said, they're innocent. In fact, yeah. that's the word like we're going to use. Yeah. Children are innocent. They're supposed to be given X, Y, Z. Yeah. And I don't know how f that case went because, of course, they removed him from the public line, right? Mm. But society and the public outcry was Carigo needs to be awarded. Yet, 
Carrigo and the children were not included. How does that play out? Uh, does the court actually go in favor of the courts of public opinion? No, the court does yeah. not. <laughs> the court is a court of law that follows what the law provides for. So I can fight such w a woman if I'm seated in my house? No, you cannot fight such a, uh, a woman mm -hmm. uh, from wherever you are because we would have to look at what the law provides for. Okay. And so if I can lay some background. Uh, if you write a will, mm -hmm. you are expressing who should get what. And the court will be very respectful of that. But then there are questions about how you wrote that will. Oh, Did you were you of uh, were you mind. drunk? Uh. Were you sane? Uh. Were you over the oh, age so of eighteen? So that is years? what can be contested to include the rest. Yes. So, so some of uh, mm. uh, those are some of the factors that are likely to be used or to if contest someone was that sick, will. That can be taken. They were sick, or they were even coerced. That somebody oh. was standing next to you and they were forcing you to actually not include. So, for example, if you have a oh. if you have another family, your wife, uh, your current wife stands next to you and forces you yeah. to actually <laughs> not include these other families. So Those are the tricks so the lawyers use. So, Elid, what you're trying to say is, I can actually go and tell Duchess and say, excuse me, when Habi died... I was in his life and he promised that Liwa Liwalo, my, our kids will get something and I can context it and then I can actually win based on that whole narrative of that maybe he was not in sin of mind, maybe he was sick, maybe he was being coerced. Like I can win. You can, you can, you are able to challenge that. Okay. So we will need evidence okay. if you are claiming that uh, this is what he promised and he said and uh, the evidence of on when and how he said it. And so, mm. the question will then be, we need to remember this, did that person have a will or didn't, did they die without a will? Now, ah. if they didn't have a will, give us a case scenario of where the, this person, let's say Nebuchadnezzar did not have a will. Yeah. Barbara is in the picture with her five children. Carigo has come into play with her two children. How do we manage that? So there are two wives. The person did not have a will. I'm the wife. She's the girlfriend. She's a girlfriend. The sidekick because it happens. Yes. <laughs> the law recognizes children. Mm -hmm. It recognizes wives, former wives, and yeah. even, yes. So it if, does recognize so if all Nebuchad those people. So Nebuchadnezzar had a first wife called Miriam, the, the law will recognize the first wife also. Yes. The law is going to recognize any person who is able to prove that they were being supported by the deceased person mm. or the person who has passed on. And therefore, when you are there as a wife and you have children and she's there as a girlfriend and she has children, what happens is that you, as a legal wife, you will come in and you'll be given, uh, the court will look into um, giving some of the properties to you and to your children. And so she will be taken if, again, was it a traditional marriage mm. or was it just a um, mpango wakando whereby but she has maybe to prove she was, she was being sustained or maintained yes so if she comes in and probably says that this man was supporting me this man was paying my rent yes this man was actually paying my children's school fees mm. then the court will consider should be able to allocate that okay if you're just joining wow. in we are the adults in the room and we're talking about this is why you need a will does your husband have a will do you as a wife have a will do you as an adult have a will? or oh, you don't have a will do you have a side chick do you think she can contest your will when you die <laughs> Plus, spice uh when we're talking about wills there are people normally who don't believe in wills because they feel like it's like you're calling death. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard about such yeah. things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how would you put, how would you encourage a gentleman or a lady out there who is afraid of writing a will? Well, um, the, the gentleman or the lady out there who is not considering to write a will should be aware that we neither know when nor do we know how we are going to die neither the hour yeah we don't know what time or day we are going to die and yes. so we need to consider uh, being in control of our properties and our assets while we are away so yeah. writing a will allows you to control who gets uh, what number two it allows you to actually pick uh, the right people to actually manage your your properties so the witnesses you put on that will are 
uh, are given a responsibility to make sure that they manage and they see to it that the property go to the right people. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the third reason wh whereby you may need to consider uh, writing a will. And this reason is that writing a will allows you to actually shorten the whole process of uh, succession because you do not want to leave people fighting. Mm. And when you do write a will, that basically means that no one is going to come and dispute. No one is going to come and try and get your property. And again, for some of the people, for example, from Karigo, who mm. I guess is from the Mount Kenya. Yes. And might have a lot of uh, 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 properties, for example, land, mm. a lot of pieces of land all over the place, Kitengela, I don't know, Kamulu, Joska, and all over never, the place. And they never share. And they don't share with <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> yes, Writing a will allows you to actually uh, uh, recons uh, constitute a whole list, mm. making sure that these properties do not go missing. You have worked so hard uh, to, 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 to have these properties and you don't want these properties to end up going back to the unclaimed assets. Mm. You want these properties to go to the right people. We want these properties to be used to maybe educate your children or to maybe um, be given to your parents yeah. or to your friends who you love so much. You have some paintings in your house or your jewelry that you uh, you actually purchased uh, for so much money. You want that uh, jewelry or painting to go to the right people. And so uh, that's uh, one of the reasons, the major reason is that you don't want to waste away your property that you work so hard for yeah. during your lifetime here on earth. <laughs> How do you then begin to have this conversation with your spouse or your family, your kids? Or is it, do you really have to have it? Because I'll tell you something, Duchess and Elliot. I told my dad two years ago, hey, Fafa, you need to write a will. And he said, Colin, you want me to die? And I said, okay, let's come out of that stigmatization. But I don't know what you have. I don't know if anything happened to you where you i would you're about begin? to call him out of his world no i was being very i only know what i know mm. i don't know other things so in such an event whereby you know my dad being the kikuyu man that he is how would he manage and maneuver in that would he need to talk to us would he need to talk to my mom or can he just do it and then now you know god forbid that time when it comes now the lawyer comes and lets us know i mean how do you approach such a conversation I think the conversation comes, you do not have to instill fear about death and you need to, for example, bring out the fact that you are actually taking care of your family, mm. even in your absence. So the f uh, if you're able to bring out the fact that we are showing some responsibility or we are trying to make sure that we have this property maybe for the next 100 plus years, then if you're able to paint that picture, then um that conversation will be easier to have with maybe your 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 wife yeah. or your father and so paint that picture about the importance of having a will yeah and uh if it doesn't get there i've i've had clients who have approached me secret secretly and they have come and told me hey i want to actually write a will and i only want these properties to go to specific people mm. and it uh, according to them, that's the right way to deal with their properties and I'm able to advise what the law provides for. And so, uh, you can, can we start, say that just start the conversation. They are confused or they are coerced. For example, if my husband Nebuchadnezzar came to you and, and decided, no, because this is happening out here. You talked about coercion. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so he's come to you and he said, I'm writing a will, but there are certain properties I am going to channel to another lady called Carigo. Mm. And then later on upon his death, I find out. Can I say, because you say there have to be witnesses. So who, who witnessed that? Was he coerced? Maybe this woman asked him two nights ago, how can, can I contest such things in a will? Like those properties that were sidelined or given to another person or another relative mm. without the knowledge of the family. I get what she's saying. I get what she's saying. Mm -hmm. So like... <coughs> excuse me so <coughs> the main wife questions why the side chick is getting this or piece even of land relatives. that i did not know can you contest that because you see i did not know this girl was writing a will mm -hmm. now he's gone now the the lawyer is coming he's saying at oh and miriam and duchess 
they are being given property and me and mm. I never knew they existed and mm. this is my property as I assume and I as well mm. and I've been with years. him for all these years can I contest well as my wife let me share this to break uh, Barbara's uh, <laughs> heart. heart yes <laughs> right away by telling her that the law provides that when uh, a wife a wife only gets a life interest in property what do you mean a life interest? Life interest is the benefits that come from a property. Okay. You do not get the property in itself. That's what the law provides for. What you can get as a wife are things like jewelry or household goods. Really? For example, the seats, the sofas, the beds. That's what the law provides for. Oh my God. The law focuses more on the other beneficiaries who are most likely your children. Wow. So my children will benefit more than you than me in the event this man does not write the will to me. Yes. Wow. Ladies, I tried to defend you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, but I like that I like that analogy because it then means that because this is what he wanted in upon his death, right? So why should we contest it? Yeah. But now um are wills only about property and money? No. Okay. Um, you can also and jewelry. <laughs> no, not really. Wills are also about how you'd like to be uh, interned, interred in death. How would you like to be buried? How would like you like your burial uh, ceremony carried out? Wow. So, for example, you might want to have a cremation. You may also want to have a a, a burial that is actually up to this expense. Ex and you're dead <laughs> and you're dead so you're actually <laughs> expressing because there are families or their individuals for example Karigo here might not want a very expensive mm. funeral mm. or might not want us to waste our flowers mm. and roses and mm. such mm. things mm. and so writing a will would allow her to actually write down who does the ceremony where it's done where she's in uh, buried yeah so some people don't want to be taken up country mm. where it may cost so much money so you are able to actually express how you want to be buried. Can we revoke that? Is that allowed by the law? Yeah. Like not only in death, but also in terms of death, uh, what you want to be done uh, during your death, but also just revoke the, the will itself. Uh, let me give an example. Nebuchadnezzar here wants to be cremated and he never told me he wants it, wanted to be cremated. Now me, the lawyer in me, there's no way we are cremating this guy. So I'm like, maybe he was crazy. So by law, and if he left you those instructions, can, okay, I, I don't know if he was coerced. Coerced. <laughs> And I'm not going to argue, but can I say no as maybe the wife or the brother or the sister and say, we are not cremating this guy. We are taking him to Ikolomani. Whether mm. he likes it or not, we are burying. Can I contest that? No, you can. Well, you have a right to contest. Yes. But the law again respects but the wishes now, of a person okay so you as the lawyer then who's going to cut, come and no, tell us i'm not the <laughs> i'm actually i mean i i don't even need to be present uh -huh. uh, during the reading of that will okay because you may also you ha also have a right you, there are people who are called executors yes mm. and you have a right to actually choose maybe a close friend or a sibling to actually s uh, witness or uh sign this will when it's been made and so the law provides that you have to be the executors have to be present when the person is making their wishes or when they are writing and so they all have to be present and they have to sign together and so when they sign together they have already agreed to the wishes of this so person the, the person the deceased the nebuchadnezzar yes. and the other two witnesses the other two witnesses maybe a brother or mm -hmm. a very close friend are present and this uh, witness and they sign and nebuchadnezzar may also express his intention to have his two friends and brother uh, be in custody of this document. And so when Nebuchadnezzar dies, Can I sue? they come over to your house. Can I sue? So <laughs> if you're going to sue, remember you have these witnesses, you okay. have these executors. Okay. So you're very going to have, you can sue, yes, mm -hmm. but you're going to have a very hard time proving those wishes that is this why we hear people these persons. say they put a caveat on the body. Uh, those are some of the things that we hear. No, you bad <laughs> no, I'm wondering if I can put a caveat. You can't cremate this body. Yes, you can go to court and get a court order to stop the burial. Mm. Pending this whole discussion on how to, to bury the person. Oh, okay. So we've had such, uh, we have had so many, I think they also in the public, uh, in the public, yes. uh, mm. uh, that there are people who have rushed to court to stop a funeral service from happening or a burial from For happening. For a cremation. Because they, are, they want uh, the issue on succession to be settled. 
or oh. before he's buried. Yes. And okay. Okay. But why is that? And why is that? Why? Why can't we bury then talk then about the yeah. succession? Because there are people who, for example, a uh, fresh uh, case in mind. Uh, there are people who have disputed the place of burial. Oh, okay. So if, for example, one wants to be buried in a public cemetery. And the family wants to take them to maybe your in-laws or mm. your actually your home. Then uh, the other party may decide to actually rush to court to stop this process from happening. And so the court may grant, depending on the reasons you have, the, may, the court may give a, a, an ear to this person to express what is the reason on why the person cannot be buried in their wives uh, or in their matrimonial home mm. and some cultures demand that the person has to be taken back to this patriarchal to home, patriarchal home. Mm -hmm. and a case in mind is the Wamboyotino case yes yes yes, yes. where the, uh, where she was disputing the husband from being buried uh in their in their home yeah actually not one boy it was a family of of, of a man you know yeah of, of the man. guy yes because she was a different tribe from yes mm. they are from yeah. different tribes so yeah. the tribe was insisting that the person has to be taken back to their yeah. home area yeah instead of being buried in their uh, in kinawamboyo tino's matrimonial, matrimonial home, home. Yeah. yeah and how did that go so it, that's a very <laughs> major case uh one of the major cases that we 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 learned in school back yeah, then yeah and what happened was that the the courts granted the wishes of the person who who passed on yeah. mr otieno yeah uh, a question when it comes to that now many of us don't write wills when mm. it comes to where we should be buried is that something we should be looking into in yeah. your experience like I should say, I want to be buried in Langata, not go to Western, or I want to go to Western. Is that something that people should start writing where? Because cases of where to be buried usually come up. Yeah. Especially in this day and age where unfortunately sometimes people separate, people divorce, or people have matrimonial homes and then they have their patriarchal homes. Should we be encouraged to set to just say, this is the place I should be buried? I, I believe so, because one... Um the whole process of burying people back home etc um is expensive and the reason is there is the reason why a person may consider writing a will is because you may factor in that expense mm. you may factor in that time spent you may factor in even the traditions that are back home and you just want some to people just assume that if you're you're buried very far mm -hmm. that uh, it will take a lot of people will forget you so they want to be buried here in nairobi so that we can be visiting you all the time i've had people say that that if they if i'm buried in western my wife will forget about me very fast so at least here in nairobi she can be taking my children to go and see me yeah yeah because yeah. that's i've had such things mm. true so sometimes even uh, while expense is there could it be something about ego or feeling lonely in death well uh I, i'm not <laughs> able to answer that <laughs> yeah. in terms of uh loneliness and <laughs> such things but most of the time you'll find people want to be close because of of course the memorial services you want actually yeah. to have uh, the burial site near to be you. remembered every other year Yeah, to be remembered and you don't want to incur a lot of uh, expenses and cost and that's why some people may choose to be buried close close home yeah yeah so um in in terms of um what to write on the wheel and you know the things that we can write on a wheel randomly say for example i'm a single mom or i'm a single dad and i have a toddler and is writing a wheel on who will raise my child in the event of me dying something i should consider because i know we see this a lot in the movies we read about it in books but is it something that actually we should consider writing in our will where children are concerned young children even if you know before 18 who will raise them in the event that i'm dead i'm dead yes it is it is uh, something and that is it contestable okay it question. is something that you need to consider <laughs> yeah. uh who um who is going to take care of the children and in most cases you have people appointing guardians mm. uh, away from even a will so you go through the other process of uh guardianship appointment where you go to court like uh, you prepare documents it's different mm. from custody mm -hmm. this is a different process where you prepare paperwork and you appoint let's say you are your sibling your sister or your cousin yeah. you appoint them as guardians to make sure that in 
in an instance where you are away or you are not present, then this person has already been given authority to make decisions on behalf of this child. Mm. So besides that, even when you're doing the will, you can also in include and indicate and, and actually uh, give a guardianship rights and say, how I'm appointing so-and-so to take care of, of my child. Yeah. But also, I'm appointing so-and-so to hold this property in, a, in the interest of, of your child mm. until they turn the age of 18. And when they turn the age of 18, I would like them to, for example, pay their campus, mm. do this, ensure that they are able to actually utilize uh, what I've left behind in the right way. So that is also important. But also, when you are picking the individuals we've called the executors, yes. who are the witnesses of the will, yes. what you are saying is that the executor is being entrusted to see everything through. Okay. So this needs to be someone who you actually trust. And so if you have indicated that you want, let's say, Barbara to be, to be your executor, uh, what we are saying is that at the end of the process, what uh, at the end of maybe five years or by the time the, the child turns the age of majority, which is 18 years, that this person is able to see that uh, the listed things are done. Mm. All that behalf. thought, I want to get up. I will get into that. If you're just joining in, we are the adults in the room and we're talking about why we need to make wills, why we need to write ones. And just stay tuned because this conversation is just getting hot. Mm. A very good evening to you, my darlings. If you're just joining in, this is Spice FM. The show is The Adults in the Room. It's exactly nine o'clock and we're talking to Mr. Eliud Ngugi, an advocate of the High Court. Today's conversation is about wills, why we need to write wills, how we can write, write wills and those scenarios that surround wills. Before we went on that small break, we were talking about executors and most importantly, I, I want to actually hear this question because maybe I'm part of it. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> it has just triggered That's why me. I asked it, yes, by I, the way. And I know <laughs> said <laughs> so it's triggered me and i've remembered yeah. uh, before we went to the break uh carigo had asked the question that for example you're a single parent and um you would like to can you write on your will who would raise your child and you're talking about executors continue from there yes so you the executor is able to see uh, the whole process yes which is if you're saying that uh carigo i appoint carigo to be the guardian of x uh and upon the um and to make sure that that when x turns the age of 15 that x attends this high school or attends this uh institution and to make sure that they are uh, well taken care of by doing that uh the executor the executor at that point is able to see that the person who has been mentioned carigo in this case is able to take care of this uh, uh, responsibility so they are they are given they are given so much power mm. to see that whatever wishes you had uh, actually come to uh, come to to life okay yes i have a question on that particular one yeah now let the same scenario let us assume that i have given power for example to carigo my friend to be the executor and to be the person who will raise my child upon my death yeah and while i'm doing this this child has a father yes. who's living yes. and this is not he's not deadbeat he's alive somewhere yes. working working somewhere can that parent contest that yeah. and if we're still talking about that let's also include the scenario where a husband and a wife barbara and nebuchadnezzar here are still married and this man does not know that i have given powers mm. to carigo mm. my friend mm. god forbid mm. i have an accident i die mm. and then my three children the list has given to carigo yet my spouse who is living mm. has no idea that that was done can this man contest and also can that other father who is not present in the child's life like uh, maybe the secondary parent mm. can they contest uh those that and, will uh, yeah can he say no 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 i'm alive i'm yeah, the father's father, child yeah. i'm the child of the father remember i, I was not coerced yeah there are witnesses my mother asked you who my yeah. friend my colleague because i'm cause okay because we've, we've had scenarios where like for example um i can't mention his name but you know him he's yes. the single dad yes 
his family of the wife wanted to raise the little girl. Yeah. But he said, no. Alikuwa ameandika will. Mimi ndio nitarize mtoto liwe liwalo. And also we have so another caller the opposite. Yeah. Who the family, the wife had indicated upon her death because she was suffering from cancer yeah. that their little baby should be raised by her family. Mm, not the now husband. husband. Now the man had to give the family the, the child. child. Can he contest? Because we are always asking ourselves yeah. that question. Why he can't contest it? Let's go back to what a will is. It's expression of interest. This uh, is very painful when I think yes, about it. <laughs> yeah. It is expression on, <laughs> on how you want your properties yes. to be managed. Mm. And part of it are your children and, and other things. Children are not property. Okay. And so what the will will contain is, for example, your car, your house, your land, it being given to your children. Yes. So you'll be able to say that your land in in Kilifi mm. goes to child number two, mm -hmm. and because they are not of a uh, of a of the age of majority, you like this property to be held in trust of this child. Yes. You like this, uh, let's say Karigo, mm -hmm. yes, to be the custodian of this uh, land in Kilifi. Yes, mm. till the child is of till the child is of age. The issue on guardianship is a separate issue which you apply for in court and so if your partner mm -hmm. learns about the guardianship whereby you have already applied and you've gotten orders uh, from court that Karigo your friend is also the guardian mm. of your children your partner has a right to go to court and contest oh. and in actually this day file and age for where women do things sniper mode Yes. And you might not find out that Karigo is the guardian of your children. Well, the and then it just passes. Alafu pata mtu akisema ati maybe even men do sniper yeah. not only women. I, yeah. I I've seen a, a scenario where the lady in her event the event of her death chose the family to raise the the child because the f the husband was not the father of the child and he did not know. So like how do you uh, <laughs> what happens? So the issue to do with custody <laughs> Women are is, is, yeah. is different. <laughs> okay. And the constitution in itself grants custody to either the father or the mother. And in the, in the absence of a mother, then the father gets the custody. So in guardianship, it can be contested. So it can be contested. It can go ahead mm. and contest the guardianship. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. Now, somebody is going to ask, so today I've decided to write my will. Mm-hmm. How often should I review it? Ama nikiandika ni hivo. Now till the Lord takes me. <laughs> so I just don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> <Good enough. laughs> Do you have a will yourself? Shindwe. I'm going to ask that question by the way. If I qualify. Because <laughs> who qualifies? But okay, first one question at a time. Yes. Yeah. So if you, if you have a will, it is advisable that you review it as often as you can. So sometimes you give it five years. And if you intend to change, de depending on the wording, so for example, you can word it and say that any subsequent properties that you acquire uh, should go to, let's say, your son. Mm. Or any subsequent or uh, cars that mm. you acquire should go to your sister or should go to your father, should go to your best friend. You are able to actually have such a clause. And so, in case you pass on, anything that you ha may have acquired maybe if you had failed to 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 actually review your will yeah maybe in uh let's say 10 years or 15 years that property will go to the right person mm. but in case you want to review and change some things because maybe you had bequested it's a term that we use you have given a property to your best friend and after two three years that friendship is no longer there. It has already died. Yes. <laughs> Mekosana. Then it's important to I need to, to run to change that will. Yeah. Yes. And the only way to change is through another document we call a codicil. Okay. Which is more like an amendment document that says that. Revised I, document. Yeah. I would like to review clause number or paragraph so and so. Mm. And in place of so and so, I want to give this property to so and so. That was the name I was looking for, codicil. I was trying to remember that funny yes. name, interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a codicil is a review or an amendment of the will. Of the will. Okay. Mm. And so, again, it has to be witnessed in the right manner. 
because you cannot sit back now in your in your house you cannot lock yourself now in your house you're so angry at your friend and decide let me now you know i hate that person <laughs> so she's not going to get this property and you decide to write it no you have to go through the whole process sit down with your executors ensure that they are present and they witness you writing and changing that will be yeah. the code seal is it expensive because you know i'm hearing <laughs> oh, you know, I'm not just, yeah lawyer, you know i'm not asked uh, we've not <laughs> <laughs> executors <laughs> hey i'm like yo in this whole store oh, is it i could just call her <laughs> just call her and we write this thing and we bring it to you is it is you can, this, is can it you, like, know, you can actually <laughs> sit down that's why i wanted to ask who qualifies for a week can i just decide okay today this phone of mine i'm going to leave it to the duchess <laughs> yeah, my this yeah <laughs> You know, like, who qualifies to write a will and what's the process? Is it expensive? Is it affordable? What's the most legal and easiest way for I, as a common manainchi, to, to, to have a will? So, yeah. the person who qualifies to write a will, one, should be an adult, 18 years and above. Okay. Number two, of course, you need to have properties that you're giving out. Or <laughs> what if I don't have? Maybe I have a bicycle. Maybe I just have clothes. And what happens? I don't if have all this. What things? if I have somebody's? I have a I have a logbook and I put it in the wheel and it's not my logbook. Really? Or a title. Why are you being funny? People <laughs> do those things. <laughs> what? Well, like, it's not yours. <laughs> like, at this. Okay, sorry. You know we're asking many questions at the same time. So, so the so. person who qualifies, yeah, is one. I'll come back to you. <laughs> yes. You've one, seen where she's going. Yes. Yeah, I've also noticed. <laughs> It's someone Women who is tricky. above the age. Sana. The, the age. Yeah. You need to be to have the right um, mental capacity. Okay. Number two, you need to be to to not to not be drunk or to be to have a mental sickness. And and so if you what have if these I know qualifications, I'm dying and that's why I'm doing it. That's why maybe I'm I'm terminally ill. Terminally ill. And the it's question causing will be, me depression. Are you? in the, your right mind okay. when you're doing or writing down this will that will be the question because again someone may contest and say she had cancer yes and therefore she maybe felt the pressure she ha yeah she had she had a moment whereby sh uh, she would not be in the right mind okay and so you need to be very careful so if you qualify for those things then you can proceed and my advice would be you can do it yourself as an individual if okay. you understand the process but my advice would be there is a reason why we have professionals there is a reason why guys? we we advocates are here mm -hmm. uh and who have gone through the training is to actually be able to advise you because you do that will uh, i've had a sit i have had i've had a case whereby a clan sat down by himself and wrote down his wishes but they, w they were contested because again we didn't have this kind of information so the manner to choose the that. manner mm -hmm. there's even the language to be used the language yeah the language uh you actually use to write this will i'm not i, I don't is mean that swahili that or, or, is, or, or is the language we hear in supreme court <laughs> that language <laughs> no that kind of language <laughs> here off they are off that's that language <laughs> Amic amicus amicus amicus, amicus. <laughs> <laughs> and then we don't know anything about the law <laughs> clearly now you sorry we're making fun <laughs> this is the right this is the right language okay yes and it's good we're having this conversation yes this is the right language that you should actually use uh <laughs> how you should phrase your sentences okay. and paragraphs so it is advisable that you actually just go to a professional okay but uh if you can do then the basic which is basically as Carigo and you have your executors, two and executors, laptop. Yeah, and, and my laptop. Yeah, and my laptop. You can proceed and prepare that. Uh -huh. And now and submit it to an advocate of the High Court. I would not or advise I that. <laughs> or can I dish it out to my relatives? Can that work? For example, I've had people like she types it, then she gives it to her sisters, her mother. Like Is now, that allowed? And when you're saying type, you mean like I just go to a word document and just type? Yeah. Is there like a, a thing I have to download from but the internet? But that's what he was saying. <laughs> it needs to be done by an a professional. Because there's a language, there's a format, uh. and they need to direct you. Because if you go the path that you're going, sometimes it can be challenged. And one oh. of the things, for example, I want to, to, to actually share with you. Yes. Is, for example, if you decide to give, let's say, let's say a piece of land 
to to Barbara and you give it to her and you fail to actually acknowledge that maybe Barbara I may leave you here yeah. <laughs> we passed on before you yes yeah. uh yeah there's a language oh. that we use my family can come for that land we, we. so you're leaving it hanging Oh. Sometimes about the language, the which air. is basically I'm saying, oh. you, you just left it hanging. Yeah. Okay. But if a professional is able to prepare this, uh. I'm able to ask you, what if Barbara does not um, make it before? Yeah, passes on before you. Yeah. And and you're able to say, okay, I would like that piece of land then to go to my other best friend. Okay. Yeah. And then we write, if Barbara f passes on, so then you, this you property put all shall eventualities. Best. Eventualities. I'm able okay. to talk, take you through that whole process. And to draft it in a way that I can, with my professionalism, I'm able to see eventualities of what may or may not happen. If you're just joining in, we are the adults in the room. And today we're talking to Mr. Ed. Read Elliot Padumi Ngogi, an advocate of the High Court. The conversation is about wills, codicils, living testaments, executors. Do you have a will, or are you good like Karigo who thinks of you can just type it on your lap? Hey, I'd like you to plug into this conversation through our social media handles Spice FM KE on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you also have a question, I've been opening the lines 0719012600. Remember, we also have our WhatsApp line 0110288162. We are the adults in the room. Spice. Yes. Why we need to write wills, why we need to write wills. I'd like you to plug into the conversation through our social media handles, Spice FM KE on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I've seen three questions already, but I know we have answered some of them. Before we get into that question, I had a question. I have seen this in some of my friends. Uh, their sister passed away last year, and she had not written a will. And as we speak, they are all fighting amongst themselves. When it comes to such things, someone wants to get the car, another wants to get a house. She was She's well established. And she, as you're saying, you never know the hour or the time that you might leave this earth. To anyone who finds themselves in such a situation where you have a loved one who lives without a will and everyone is contesting it, how is the best way? Are things like arbitration allowed when it comes to wills and successions? Yeah. The best way or the best approach where you do not leave a will will be, again, Karigo. Yeah. You called intestate. You have died intestate. Yes. And when uh. you die intestate, what will happen is you will mm, file a petition. Now your relative or whoever else can file a petition. Yes. And you'll be seeking to become an admi administrator. Okay. An so administrator. anyone can, maybe a sister, a brother. Yes. A sister, okay. brother, uh, your mother mm -hmm. can actually do that. Or your father can actually file a petition in court seeking to be appointed as, as an administrator of the estate can okay. they do that if you have a wife or a spouse or a husband can your family do that if you have a wife yeah can they still ask like uh nebuchadnezzar died without a will mm -hmm. then the sister carigo yes. all of a sudden wants to be the executor yes we we actually that's why you find now contention because the sister or the other siblings mm. have uh, overruled the wife mm -hmm. and the current family and decided to actually file for succession and when they file the advantage we have is that um when you file the court proceeds to actually gazette and ask that if anyone wishes to object that the following persons being appointed as administrators they should protest and come to court and and show why and so that's where now this happens on the kenya gazette mm -hmm. um it's posted there and you're given six months for any person who wants to contest so and so being appointed as an administrator what and so you should be on the lookout wow because if you don't look at the kenya gazette so if you, you cannot might not look at the kenya things. gazette which uh -huh. is available on the kenyalaw.org or if you google the name of the estate for example if you google uh, in the estate of nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. who we are using in this case yes then the name most of the time will appear or mm. well, then you'll get to see you'll be able to see whether there's somebody who has filed a uh, succession what if i miss out that i did not know about this kenya gazette thing i did not google then six months have passed and then all of a sudden carigo the sister is the one 
trying to get, uh, trying to be the executor of this can i still challenge that or the court will uh, and i can say i didn't see or i didn't know C <coughs> can the court accept that so if it's not within the six months yes and carigo rushes to court immediately mm. after the expiry of the six months rushes yes. to court and seeks for confirmation yes then you have failed to actually be observant okay and so carigo end up getting the appointment of being an administrator and that means basically that as an administrator you have the power now to distribute the property as you as you have indicated and so if you have a list for example saying that on that side of the family mm. where they have indicated that this property should then go to that side only mm. we will proceed and actually distribute it uh the law confuses me sometimes and it confuses me in this way uh, i hear and you can correct me if i'm wrong that when i get married with uh from to nebuchadnezzar whoever is nebuchadnezzar out there polis and uh, the women you can study uh they say whatever we acquire or the properties we acquire during our marriage are supposed to be shared that's what the law says now how is it that this nebuchadnezzar dies without a will I still have to start fighting with his sisters. Is that really fair? Mm. If we look at it, when we came together, he did not have a house. I did not have a house. We have bought a house. We've acquired a property in Isinya. We've acquired something else in Karen or in Migori. Yeah. And then now Nebuchadnezzar dies without a will. Mm -hmm. Remember the, what the law says. We got married legally. Yeah. Church signed everything or rather even if it's AG as in everyone knows his family because we've had malicious family <coughs> members who sometimes come behind the back to throw away or disown the wife today i'm defending the wives Actu you've actually uh yeah. there's a gentleman called joshua Loande has asked that question and he says i thought parliament uh, i thought parliament recently passed a law saying that when a man dies his estate will only will only be given to his wife or wives or children who are known by the family before his death please elaborate and here Nebuchadnezzar doesn't have a will. Yeah. How do you play that? And the sister and the family are also trying to contest that. It's the process. And I don't know which law he's referring to <laughs> because we have uh, various <laughs> laws and the current law that we are currently using for succession. Yeah. Unfortunately. The amended one. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, is still uh, <laughs> not as recent as the things are right okay. now. Yes. And so what... It did not really amend that uh, that provision about it going uh, specifically to the wife. Okay. There is still the procedure whereby if property, if you pass on and you had property together as, as, as a husband and wife. Yes. Then what will happen is that the question we need to ask first is whether this property was registered in the sole name of the party. Of Nebu Nebuchadnezzar. It's registered in Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, okay. uh, sometimes we are very silly and in love. And okay. I yes. So if it's only registered in his name, then yes. it's taken in succession, in succession law, which is different from matrimonial. Oh my law, god, really it's taken that this property is actually uh Nebuchadnezzar's. And when he passes on then his wishes, if he didn't have a will, then mm -hmm. it can be contested by the family, by the, the sister family, can go. Or the wife needs to actually prove go to court. Not really prove. But she can actually file for uh, for succession to be appointed as a personal administrator. People need to get wills but, at this rate. But, <laughs> but she's the wife. Why are we going to court? I thought it's automatic. It's not automatic. It is not automatic. Is that what you're saying? That the law needs sorry, the law needs to change right now in terms of that aspect. Yes, the law needs to be merged. So ah, that from the you, uh, okay. yeah. so the marriage act yeah and the, the succession, succession act, act needs to be merged in a manner that if you pass on then it should be direct uh that succession succession should uh the property should go to your wife so currently it is husband. not it is not so if he dies nebuchadnezzar dies without a will yes his sister carigo can come and contest it and they can actually take me to court he, or be granted it even the mother-in-law can contest it or even uh, a friend can actually uh, contest uh, it uh, uh, and come to ladies court i'm going to it. say this from experience start writing your names so in that's this why place. it's best for you to just write a will and if the will is being written and ensures the spouse you see your name there 
But sometimes you don't know sometimes these people are, do, are doing this thing in secret. <laughs> they are meeting the elites secret. behind your back. That's, yeah. that's where I'm, that's where I was like. Uh, that's where I I am I'm, I'm trying to reconcile. Like, how will you write a will and we live in the same house and we've been together for forty two years and then I'm not in the will? It happens. It and happens. I can't. And and now I have to go to court. It happens. Wow. It happens. Um, there's a gentleman who's asked. How sure are you that the lawyer can't interfere with these documents just to suit someone's interest in the family? We are, we have taken an oath of office. We but have, some of you, you know. Uh, we have taken <laughs> an oath to ensure that our conduct is in accor accordance with, with the law. Yes. And in honor of that, if you find that your lawyer interferes with, let's say, a will, then you have, you have other ways of seeking, uh, recourse of finding justice because we are not supposed to mess around with documents i'm supposed to listen to my client mm -hmm. listen to what he has to express and guide them in the right way and make sure that they actually uh, indicate down their wishes and that they actually uh, prepare a, a will that can actually not be contested can we say also that uh, the witnesses that you're talking about are like a security net for the person who's writing the mm. will? Like the way you say, I come to write a will, I need to bring Karigo, I need to bring my other sister as witnesses. Can those people also serve as witnesses when it comes to writing this will and I guarantee that it cannot be altered? Yeah, That's, that's why um, we are saying you have to go to a professional <laughs> because <laughs> this professional will require that you come with executors okay. who are witnesses mm. who are going to see you sign and they are going to counter sign and you are going to sign on each and every page and they can request to have copies to keep copies of this original will and so even if you leave a copy with your lawyer um and he decides to be uh, to be to be to be this funny. kind of person who is funny and decides to pluck out a, a page and change something then the original will is actually with the executors so they okay. are, are actually offer their security to make sure that this document remains as original as it was intended to be and also you can so decide. people there are four copies that go the lawyer the two executives and the person who's writing the will you can choose to have your executors keep the copies it's not but i don't want them to know everything or, or they have to know everything They'll can they just sign see. but they ha don't have to know everything in that thing you can choose <laughs> Yes, it's not. Utaki <laughs> kusema <laughs> 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 They have, they have to see you sign, uh -huh. and they need to be aware of what uh, oh. <laughs> they are signing. Yeah, <laughs> but you can choose to not give them copies okay. and decide that your lawyer keeps a copy, okay. and the other copy will be kept in your safe in the bank. Okay, I have not given my executors a copy. And it's just me and you who have the copy, or me and the lawyer. God forbid this lawyer dies before me. So we, we're not uh, going to. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just trying to look at the scenarios here. Uh, uh, does the lawyer have another person who knows where some of these things are? The executors are right there, and they need to be aware of yeah. where you keep your copies because they are the ones being given the power to make sure that whatever is written is is accomplished. No, I'm saying the lawyer dies. Not me. True. He mm. dies. Uh, or she dies. Yes. Yeah. But the executors do not. Oh, yes. So they'll be able to raise this issue and say, okay, uh, the Nebuchadnezzar and the lawyer have passed on, but mm. Nebuchadnezzar had a will. Okay. Mm. And so we know where the will is. And they'll be able, in, in the law firm, there's a succession oh, okay. process. So there's a file. They'll be able to retrieve that copy of the will okay. yeah. and give it to the family and to see that everything is accomplished yeah. yeah when it comes to okay people who own businesses partnerships is it possible for a will to be written in the term in in, in the event that somebody dies is this something that one can consider you remember we spoke about kids and being a single mom or single dad who will raise your kids can you write a will in terms of, in the event of you die or your partner dies on a joint ownership business? Like, does this apply? Yes. And see, how is this, how does this look? You see, 
a partnership which i would in this case uh, assume would be a company yes if you actually own let's say with barbara mm -hmm. um you have maybe 50 percent shares and she has a balance of 50 percent and and so in the will because a company is also a, an asset yeah you are able to actually express your intentions on how you'd like your shares to be distributed so you're able to say that the 50 percent of my shares in this company that we own with barbara i would like the shares to be granted or to be given to my children or to be given to my friend so it's actually possible to to grant those shares and uh, it, uh they'll make sure the other partner has to live up to them that yes they and their partner contest the law will be, will be able to see that this is lived <laughs> is actually accomplished because if you pass on then these individuals or rather barbara in this case will be going to will try and uh and, and maybe make the share transfers yeah. done and the executors who are present and we have a document will be able to actually follow up and make sure that Carigo's shares in that company with with uh, Barbara are supposed to go to Carigo's firstborn. Mm. Yes. And so we'll be able to see that happen. Spice.